Hello everyone! Surprise! Uh, part of me is filming this video because here's my tiara. It's official. For some reason it's like this, it's like my head shrunk because this tiara feels too big. I don't know why. Um, part of me is filming this video to see if any of you pop in in the afternoon. I don't know if maybe that's better for some of you folks. Um, part of me is filming this video because, hi Tiffany, <laughs> are you always online? You're always online. Um, part of me is filming this video because I just left my phone in my car and it overheated. Hi Steph. And when you're in Florida, you have to not, you cannot forget your phone in the car. It will melt. And so I'm glad that it's not quite August yet. Uh, my phone did not die. So yay. <laughs> uh, but I cannot forget my phone in my car. I know I have no brain, but this is something that I definitely have to remember. Do not leave the phone in the car. Oh, you're homesick. I'm so sorry. I hope you feel better. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to check in with you guys. I, this is my fancy new camera case. I plugged in the battery so that it would be ch charging while I was gone. Um, but while I was at the coffee shop, Chris helped introduce me to my camera. Look, isn't it so pretty? So step number one was to figure out how to put the strap on the camera. And I dutifully looked in the manual and could not find anywhere where it said how to put the strap on the camera. I had to go to YouTube. Ironically, the girl on YouTube that I watched how to put the strap on the camera said, we've been putting the straps on the camera totally wrong until Joe over here watched the YouTube or read the manual and figured out how to do it correctly. Well, they had a Canon. So apparently in the Canon manual, tells you how to put your strap on. I guess the Nikon people just expect you know how to do that. But uh, the sneaky little thing is really, I don't know how to hold this up with one hand and show you with the other one. The sneaky thing is really this, this toggle, and this you have to actually thread it back through twice. So you thread it, you pull out this, well, I'm going to have to figure out a way to show you guys <laughs> if you care. <laughs> or just, yeah, they are a little bit of a pain in the butt. you gotta, you got to massage it. Um, if you super care, you can YouTube exactly how to properly put your camera strap in so that it does not slide out. If you are hard on your cameras or running on and off the road, storm chasing on the side of the road. So uh, Chris taught me how to... She. <laughs> She said, number one, make sure your camera is off when you change your lens. Number two, once you take your lens off, don't spend a lot of time with your lens off. And don't keep your camera like this when you're changing your lens because dust will settle. Dust in cameras are not a good thing. And every so often she, she actually goes in and manually takes the dust out of her camera. You should probably take it to a shop. Um, if we had a shop here, I would take it there. I may end up paying Chris to do it. <laughs> If and when that time ever comes. But yes, Florida has a lot of dust, as does the dust bowl where I am going. There is much, much dust. Which means I need, um, I still need a UV filter. I need an extra battery. I have ordered some cards because this is a card that I stole from Chris's camera. This did not come with any cards. I need um, a proper tripod mount. I have a decent tripod, but I do not have a mount. And I do not have the time to go screwing stuff into this tiny little hole. Plus this tiny little hole does not match what I have on my tripod. So, hi Michelle. Dust in the body is bad, yes. Yes it is. Hi Heather. So, she taught me that. What else did she teach me? I know it's just like tiny little things that you don't realize until you get the camera and you start to put things together. So, having Chris there is really so helpful. And I learned a lot last year. Did I put this on wrong? Oh no, it just, maybe I did put it on wrong. Hold, hold on. No, it's flipped. Seriously? No, wait a minute. It's flipped one more time. Okay, I did it right. <laughs> I have no brain today, you guys. I watched the video from this morning and realized that I was saying all the wrong things and there were sentences I didn't finish. I didn't even finish telling the story about Murphy being my guardian angel. Murphy is fun to have as a guardian angel. He does things like, uh, see, I'm already getting off on a tangent. Squirrel, I need some sleep. What I really want to do though is sit down and eat curry and watch To All the Boys I've Loved Before because I love that movie 
it's a feel-good movie and I would like to feel good today. So instead of my Grey's Anatomy, which is my typical go-to comfort food, I think I might watch To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Have any of you guys seen that? Hi, Nat. Sony. Talk to Jess. Oh, cool. I will have to do that. Although I feel like I know nothing about cameras right now. Murphy. My favorite Murphy story is one day on my way to work, I stopped at the gas station where I normally stop for gas. And I went to put my card in the pump so I could fill up my gas. And it said, card reader broken, you must go inside. And I was so frustrated. And this was back when you didn't have to prepay for your gas. So I filled up my tank and I went inside and I stood in line. Cause really I was already there at the gas station. I wasn't gonna go to another gas station just to fill up my tank. And I went inside and I stood in line and when I paid for it, she said, what candy would you like? And I was like, what? And I was kind of having a crummy morning and this was just one more thing to go wrong in my crummy morning. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And she said, yeah, pick a candy. You get a free candy bar with a fill up. So that is what Murphy does for me. Murphy makes my life uh, hell. He makes everybody's life hell. And yet, he gives me nice little prizes on the way. Uh, my mom knows that he exists because his name will pop up everywhere. It pops up on license plates. It pops up everywhere. You don't think it's going to pop up. It pops up right when I need it to pop up. And so it's really, really obvious. Um, my grandmother, my Greek grandmother, heard this whole thing about the guardian angels. And she decides to name them things like old school angel names, old Latin names that I don't even know, crazy names. And I said, I have a guardian angel, his name's Murphy. And my grandmother says, no, it's not, you are not allowed. Hi, Alana, you are not allowed. This is a Nana story, I'm telling this, I should add this to my Nana stories. Your guardian angel cannot be named Murphy, that is not an angel name. And at that point, my mother turned around in the car and said, oh yes it is, <laughs> because I've witnessed the fact that she and Murphy have this whole conversation going on. So uh, I talk to the universe, however I talk to the universe, it talks to me through this Murphy kind of person that I've made up and several uh, like tarot card readers and psychics throughout my life. Hi, I love you, honey. Uh, several mediums and tarot card readers throughout my life have looked at me and said, the universe talks to you and you listen, keep listening. So. It tells me things when I'm on the right tracks. It gives me sequences of the number one. My birthday is January 11th, 111. So I know that I'm on the right track when I see sequences of ones in places. It's just kind of like the universe going, yes, this is where you need to be. Keep going. You're doing a good job. Sometimes you just need to hear that every so often. You guys, you're doing amazing. Keep doing it. You are doing a great job today. Look in the mirror and know that I told you, you are fantastic and you are doing a great job today. Mwah. I love you. Uh, oh my gosh, there's nine people on here. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Um, I don't really have any updates as far as the Nicole situation. Um, yeah, just, you know, family stuff. Trying to trying to get things squared away. Um, and yeah, I spent all my time at the coffee shop. I, Chris and Naomi were both there. I like to, uh, we like to have writing dates at the coffee shop once a week. Hi, Allie, I love you too, girl. Mwah. Never go off in the woods alone. Never, promise me. Um, we have these writing dates and they know that number one, I didn't want to talk about dead people. So it was kind of my safe space. Um, and then number two, that I had a giant scatterbrain and I couldn't really concentrate on anything. And, and I really needed to work on my plot for the Chaos Crushers novel. So, uh, thanks Nat. I have not seen tweets. I have kind of stayed off social media because I'm still angry and I don't want any of that to come through on social media right now. So I'm just sort of staying in my, talking to my family and staying in my safe spaces offline right now. Um, that's where I'm at. But they helped me with the plot of my Chaos Crushers book because the way this one is gonna go is a lot kind of like Ocean's Eleven. It's very plot heavy in the way that everything needs to be connected. So I kind of have to figure out what everyone wants, 
what the end uh, problem is, you, what the problem they're going to solve is going to be, how they're going to solve it, what each one of them, how each one of them is sort of going to be redeemed, even though they're kind of a dark force anyway. I mean, everyone in this world's kind of a bad guy, but it's which bad guys are worse. So <laughs> Tiffany, honey, I can't wait for this book either because it is so much fun. And it starts with Bob. Bob has been captured. He's already captured. He's in a sphere in the dungeon and lonely in the dungeon. Poor Bob just wants some friends. That's how they got him in the sphere. They captured him and put him in the sphere and he just wants some friends. He's really hoping somebody ends up in the dungeon so he can make some friends. And the orcs have taken over this castle so the king that captured him is now dead. So everyone has forgotten that he even exists down in this dungeon. And he just, that's how the story begins is with Bob, my gelatinous, amorphous, goo-like creature. Um, he's actually not a he, he's a they. I keep mis misgendering my own character and I need to correct that. Bob does not have a gender, so Bob prefers to go by they. So they are stuck in the sphere down in the dungeon and they are going to collect some friends along the way. Essentially, that's going to be the whole uh, arc of the story. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, uh, I sprang this on Sarah. I didn't tell her I was gonna go live in the middle of the day, but ta-da! Yes, my bookshelves. Everyone uh, continues to make comments about my bookshelves. They are not purchasable anywhere. I paid someone to make them for me after we messed up everything in the library. The carpenter in the library, I had never had bookshelves installed before, so I didn't know the things to tell her. So that was a learning experience for everyone, which is why it's taking forever to fix. Once I knew the problems from this library, I knew what to tell the carpenter in this library, which was don't make the bays too long so that the, sh the shelves bow. This one in the middle is actually longer than the ones on either side. That's fine. Aesthetically, it looks really nice. I knew we were going to paint it white. The other ones are stained. But since I was going to paint this white, we didn't need like a fancy, hi, Tyler. Mwah. Uh, we didn't need a fancy wood. So this is actually, I think, particle board but it's, it's got some nice, on the ends of the shelves, there are like end caps on the shelves and it's all painted white so you can't see it. It looks beautiful. Florida is all very light colors. My house is green and purple and blue and fuchsia, but it's all like a gray. It's all very subtle and it's very white. I have um, a faux hardwood floor. It's vinyl plank, but it looks like hardwood here. If I can angle this down, see? That's my floor. Um, I wanted to go with really dark wood. Mom says that's because I'm a Vermonter. <laughs> Apparently Vermonters like really dark wood. Hi, Maya. Maya keeps me alive, you guys. She's my amazing masseuse. If you are in Titusville, you should go to Health Quest Wellness. That's my plug for Maya. Mwah! She's amazing, and I could not survive without her. I'm doing my physical therapy right now. <laughs> oh, all my family's all saying hi to each other now. This is great. It's a family hang, you guys. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so my bookshelves, I love these. I love the reference section. They are a mess. Uh, this might not look like a mess to you, but like this part in the middle, I had to get an extra shelf. So dad made me an extra shelf here. I need to fix that. This whole section is uh, the books Alethea has written section. This right here, I'm pointing up, are all the Harry Potter books. I have Harry Potter bookends, Hermione and Harry. I also have... Um, next to them. Ooh, yep, that way. Actually, is that? No, that's Harry Potter. This one is Lord of the Rings. I have Gandalf and Bilbo, and Gandalf is knocking at the door, and Bilbo is answering the door on the other side of the bookend. I got those from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt when I arranged a whole fellowship of us from Nashville to drive to Memphis to see a sneak preview of the last two movies, um, Two Towers and Return of the King. So we all drove to Memphis. There were eight or nine of us. It was exactly a fellowship. We spent the night in a hotel, saw the movie at like 10 o'clock the next morning, and then drove all the way back. And the exact same crew that went the first year went the second year. And because I wrangled everyone together and made it happen, they gave me those beautiful bookends. And I wanted to display them on the shelf. Hi, Dylan! Dylan is my nephew, you guys. 
Health Quest Wellness Center. Yes, like I mentioned before, please go see Maya if you are local or if you are visiting Titusville. If you come to my house and visit, I will usually set you up an appointment with Maya. Tempest knows. Tempest is a, a very uh, frequent visitor of Maya when she is here in town. We love Maya. Mwah! She saves our lives. It's an amazing thing. There are so many people on here now. I, I was just going to pop in and say hi and make sure my phone didn't overheat, but... Now there's so many of you. <laughs> uh, what else? You guys have any other questions? Otherwise, I should, you know, let you go about your day. I'm doing okay. I'm still crazy scatterbrained. But, you know, that's how we deal with things. Uh, yes, Michelle, you all need to come see Maya. <laughs> I love you guys, too, so much. Seriously. I, I know that I say my life is better with you in it as, like, a catchphrase, but I say it because it's true. My life is better with all of you in it. I have since, I feel like since I was born, I've been looking for my tribe. And it has been so nice to find every single one of you in all the corners of my universe, all over the world. <laughs> it's just so great. And every time I meet a new friend, it just makes my life more special. So thank you for being part of it. I really appreciate it. Allie is making a book too. <gasps> That's wonderful. Is she going to illustrate it as well? I hope she does. I think kids should always try to illustrate their own books. It's a really great exercise. I should illustrate my own books, especially the picture books. There was one that I did for Scholastic. I wrote the manuscript and they got back to me. This is another one that's like in the middle waiting for an agent to take it back to Scholastic. Oh, good. Excellent. I can't wait to see her illustrations. Um, but when Scholastic got back to me for a rewrite, they said, we want it shorter. We want it to be a lift the flat book. We want to keep the poetry, but see if you can make it as few pages as humanly possible. So I took some pieces of paper and actually folded them in half to make, it was going to be a board book. So you don't have to do the novels have a, all the pages have to be a division of four. It has to be divisible by four because every time you add one page, you actually add four. So first time caller, long time fan. Oh, thank you, Shane. It's so lovely to see you here. Uh, anyway, with board books, it can be as many pages as you want. So we, I was going to try to do seven spreads. I needed to do 10 or less. So I folded all my pieces of paper. A spread is the whole thing. This is one page. This is the spread. So I made 12 spreads. And the front would obviously be the title and the back would be information and the barcode. Seven spreads in the middle. And I wrote all the poetry and I scribbled a sloth the wrong way, I think. So I had to scratch it out and scribble it again. Um, I had to make, it was, uh, it's a book that counts the number of toes in strange animals. It was originally called the Strange Foot Zoo. Now it's called Clever Toes and it's a counting book and it has like a sloth and a giraffe and a horse and an axolotl and a polydactyl cat because polydactyl is just a great word and should be in a toddler book. So yeah, I'm waiting on an agent so that I can actually pitch that again to Scholastic because the editor that it was with left her job in December and she did not buy my book before she left. <laughs> so it needs to be repitched to Scholastic. Um, yeah, oops. Oh, that was Shane. Oh, Michelle. Yes, so this is another book that is waiting in the wings. Fingers crossed. All of these things, hopefully, the lightning is gonna strike in a good way, right? Right? You owe me. I mean, I don't think the universe owes any of us anything, but seriously, right now, I really need something good to happen. Hi, Nick. We're right now praying for good things to happen. Yay! Um, but yeah. Yeah, anyway. I really, I swear I really didn't have anything to talk about. Oh, hi Michelle! Hugs from London! Mwah! Cheers, my love. Cheers. Seven years? No, it has not been seven years. We are not that old. <gasps> Nat and I met seven years ago? Oh my goodness. Sarah says it's coming. Ugh. I hope so. I hope that's true. I need good things to happen. I really wish they would happen like tomorrow, but I'm okay waiting a little bit. I can wait. It's kind of excruciating, but it's okay. I can wait. You know how I can wait? Because I have all of you and I love all of you. Oh, FIFA. Mwah. 
Hi, hi girl, she's part of my posse. The original Kenyan posse, that's right. We go way back. We go all the way back to signing at the Parthenon at the foot of Athena. I did that. I did that. My first signing was at Forbidden Planet in London. And not long after that, I signed books with Sherilyn Kenyon at the foot of Athena in the Parthenon in Nashville. I've been some amazing, amazing places. Thank you, Tyler. I am not old. You guys will remember Tyler if you have watched any of my fairy tale rant videos. Tyler was in uh, probably the, I would call it the original fairy tale rant theater because I didn't just rant about the fairy tale, we acted it all out. And that was a, my present for my birthday was my family acting out the video for me. So it was called The Master Thief and Tyler was amazing and sort of channeled Christopher Walken for his part. <laughs> oh, I miss you, kid. Mwah. Forbidden Planet. Yes, I want to come back to London. When I published Enchanted, I had a long talk with the publicist and I said, these are all the places I would love to go. I need to get back to London. Everybody wants it. Danny is, I believe Danny is still working at Forbidden Planet as, as the person who's in charge of the events and the author signings. Um, I said, Danny wants me to come back to London and I need to go to, I don't even remember all the other places, Utah, Atlanta, because of Dragon Con, all these places. And they said, you realize you have no budget for this book. So I sent myself on book tour and I crowdfunded my own book tour. And this is long before Patreon. Um, I don't even think Kickstarter was around. It was something called Chip In. It was an, uh, uh, it wasn't even an app. It was a website that they had created for like people at corporations. If everybody was gonna chip in to buy Christy a present for her birthday, then you could use this website and everybody could donate money. Now they have GoFundMe and Indiegogo and all of these other places. Um, I have a GoFundMe out right now. I have a Patreon. I have a Coffee or Ko-Fi. Does anybody know how that's actually pronounced? It's spelled K-O-F-I, but it looks like coffee. And the whole, the whole uh, thinking behind it is that someone wants to buy you a cup of coffee. It's like a tip jar. It's in like $3 increments. You keep doing you. Thanks, love. I will keep doing me. <laughs> uh, okay. <sighs> I need to go work on this book. I need to work on this book. Tiffany, you have my permission to email me later and beat me over the head and tell me to work on this book. But for right now, I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm going to stuff my face full of chicken curry because I have not eaten lunch yet and it's probably almost dinner time. And I'm going to watch... What did I say the movie was called? To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Because I love that movie. That movie is great. That movie is pure girl teen wish fulfillment. And it's wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. I love you so much. I love you all so much. Thank you all for just being amazing and being my friend. Again, my life is better with you in it. Mwah.